There's a new ebook out by uh, New York Times columnist Mark Oppenheimer, and it uncovers a sex scandal within the Zen Buddhism community. Now, this I find really interesting because of all of the, the religions, clearly I'm a fan of none of them, as anybody who listens to this show knows very well, but what I would say, the least bad of them, the one that I, I'm less hard on because I don't think they're as crazy, would have been Buddhism, to be honest. Because Buddhism, in many ways, is more of a life philosophy. And they make outlandish claims like every religion, just not as many. And, for example, they say, you know, this is how we think you should live your life. This is how we think you should clear your mind. It's more of like, it can be like a mental practice more so, or like a new age help yourself movement, self-help movement, uh, than a religion. So it kind of dabbles in both. But apparently, the, in many ways, they are exactly like the Catholic Church. So there's a review of this book in the Daily Beast. They talk about uh, Aido Shimano Roshi. Apparently this guy is a well-known uh, Zen Buddhist. He's the founder and leader of New York's Zen Study Society, among the largest Western Buddhist communities in America. And prominent CEOs go to this place, and there's celebrities that are among the members. And Shimano carried on affairs with over a dozen women in his community over the course of 30 years. Uh, other Zen Roshis as well are mentioned. Uh, similar allegations for Richard Baker, another guy, uh, Joshua Sasaki, Taizan Maizumi, and the list goes on, really. Quote, the pattern is disturbingly familiar uh, from Catholic, ultra-Orthodox Jewish, and similar systematic abuse scandals. Insiders made aware positive values of spiritual teacher stressed, abuse hushed up, abuse repeated. That's the cycle that goes on here. And I, to be fair, these were not rapes, and these were not uh, children, and it wasn't molestation. We're talking about actual consensual relationships, but with a very, very wide net. And it, I guess you could say it's as consensual as it could be in a situation where you have a disciple and a guru. One can certainly make the case that that is unethical, and that also is a violation, and it's not really consensual because there's a position of power uh, and control. But again, this is fascinating to me because of what Buddhism represents. Those of you who might not know the specifics, now I don't know as much as an expert would, for example, but I do know a fair amount. And when it comes to Buddhism, one of the things they stress is that all problems stem from uh, wanting things, from the, from the outside. You're supposed to find peace inside. And that even includes foregoing all worldly pleasures. And they say, actual, actually, pleasures are the root of pain because uh, take sex, for example. It's a good thing, but you can become addicted to it. And if you're addicted to it, then you keep wanting that and you're not happy just being yourself, just being, right? So they say you should get rid of all external pleasure. And then if you get rid of the pleasure, it'll also get rid of the pain. It's kind of like a mental purity type thing where you have to become non-human in a way and get rid of your instincts and your desires and just be comfortable just 100% being yourself, which is why it's, you know, totally uh, uh, an appealing thing to a lot of people who might be caught up in the fast life or have had drug issues in the past or things like that. And I'm not denying it can help a lot of people if they really buy into it and they try to work through it or whatever it is. But what this shows you is that they're not able to do it. Nobody's able to fundamentally deny their nature. But that's what Buddhism wants you to do. They want you to say, get rid of all worldly pleasures because that can be the root of pain, so get rid of it. Yeah, but you're not able to do that. These guys who are supposedly the Zen masters, the Buddhist masters, were boinking a shitload of people. Maybe that's why they were so happy. They were having a hell of a lot of sex. So this shows you that Buddhism, just like all the other religions, even if they appear, you know, less bad at face value, there's always still a major uh, component of, at, at its core, they are all made up it is all BS. And when you give a man power, right, and this is the other big point, when you give a man power and authority, this always happens. He always takes advantage of it and ends up fucking uh, roughly a thousand people.